Ladies and gentlemen, the final match. The referees from the International Arm Wrestling Council. The finalists, undefeated in five years, five-time world champion, Paul Hurley. And ladies and gentlemen, the sole remaining challenger, Lincoln Hawk, the man who surprised everybody here. The winner here tonight will walk out of here with the World Cup, a $250,000 trunk from the Volvo White Company, $100,000 in cash, and the title of Arm Wrestling World Champion. Welcome everyone to Walking After Whiskey with Trevor and Travis. I'm Trevor. Trav. <laughs> We're going to give you guys a review, a breakdown review of your latest episode of The Walking Dead. We're also going to give you an awesome review of tonight's whiskey, <laughs> which is Tin Cup. Made after the movie. We got, a, we got a, Colorado. We got a great <laughs> uh, breakdown for you guys tonight of Season 7, Episode 12, entitled Say Yes. Then we're going to have a nice drinking game for you guys, review this whiskey, and... Uh, Probably get a little cross-eyed. <laughs> Less a little. It's in a review. <laughs> so let's get into, into this review. So what we see a lot of is uh, Rick Michelle time. A little finding booty, a little finding guns, a little just finding out something nice in the Sexy apocalypse. scavenger time. Right. You see them uh, kick a door in. They're, they find they find a gun in the first house. They find a gun in the second house. And then, uh, and then boom, sexy naughty time, it's dark, they're in the van, you know? Yeah. And uh, then they wake up, and they're searching again, and then more sexy time. Every time they find a gun, they have sex. <laughs> like, that's, that's pretty good. Motivation, right? Pretty good motivation. motivation, pretty good rule. So it's, it's going back to getting back to some roots of the show, you know, um, interaction, people, what are people doing? Not really about all the bad things pressing on them, but let's see some wins. What are the law of averages, right? This is a, this is a good win. We're going to go out with this woman, we're going to find some good stuff, and have a nice vacation for themselves. And he's not like, watching Judith again. <laughs> they're about to go back, and my friend's like, "Yeah, we should really get back." And he's like, "I can stay a couple more days." One more day. One, one I can more stay day. a couple more days. A day and a half today and tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, they didn't find a lot of good stuff out there. Um, well, it's good that they it's good that they didn't go back because then they found the zombie carnival. Yeah, that was pretty. Do, 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 do. That reminds me of a little video game. Uh, God, it's like Left for Dead or, or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. It's all in the arcades. When you're in the carnival, a bunch yeah. of killer clowns coming after you, or zombie clowns. But yeah, this was some kind of like military response, like to help people out or, or response against the zombies. They made like they made the last stand there, which they obviously yeah, lost. All the fences too. draped off, so the zombies couldn't see. Yep. They had a little bunker with uh, RTEs ready to eat, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was good. They found hell of guns. Yeah, all these, all these, all these uh, uh, military personnel all had guns strapped to their backs. You know, in their holsters. Absolutely. So they, they, they found they found sidearms and rifles and sniper rifles. It was like the mother load. Like this is what yeah. they needed. This was a win. You know what I mean? They so they get up there, fall through the roof, fall right onto, I believe, a bed. Yeah, and look right. Over, see a bunch of MREs or right. RTs, whatever they Vegetables call them in there. And, yeah. and the whole place is blocked in. And they found beer. They found growlers in there. Yeah. They're having. Candle night. lit, <laughs> candle lit, then they're even oh, brisket. Man. Just yeah. sitting there like, yucking it up, fucking it up, and not all that good stuff. Yeah, they go they go and clear the whole the clear the whole area, but you gotta understand, like Rick and Michonne are like the the sickest tag team MVPs of the of zombie apocalypse. They are taking they don't even worry about each other, they're just taking things out left and right, doing like seven, eight, you taking this eight, I'll take the seven, just killing everything yeah, in their Let's split them up. Or, we, or we could go home. Nah, we <laughs> got this, we got this. Quack, quack, quack. And sit there and she's like, How many you got left? And he's like he sits back for a second and goes, just counting them all nonchalant. And then uh, she, he probably climbs up on the Ferris wheel. He sees the deer. He's trying to shoot it again. And then in the middle of all the shit, he falls. Michonne's 
thinks he's getting eaten and she thought she lost her number one, number two, and uh, she starts crying, and then boom, he gets out and says, I tried to save it, and throws her a sword. <laughs> yeah, that, that CGI deer must have only cost like $10 to do. That. No it looked horrible. Shit, it was like, deer. It could have been a guy, two people in a suit, would have looked better yeah, than the yeah, CGI yeah, deer. It was a hologram had. deer, man. It was crazy. So when we get back to Alexandria, right, we see someone's actually taking care of Judith, and it's, and it's Tara, and Tara's having a heart-to-heart with Judith about, you know, about coming out about Oceanside. Yeah, because she hasn't talked about it yet. Mm-hmm. Because never their rule was, that, you know, you don't talk about it and this and that. They try to kill her, even though. Yeah, and they try to walk her out for her last little stroll in the park there or in the woods. Uh, she she's talking to her. She's like, well, I don't know if we should introduce them. Uh, they're they're gonna shoot first. We're gonna shoot back. We're gonna lose people. And, and maybe they won't fight. But who are we to them? And, like, who's the better person for trying to stop people from doing evil? So. Yeah, she comes to a realization as she starts talking to Judith out loud. That um, she's like, who are better than them? If we go there, they're gonna fight us. They don't want to fight Negan. They want to hide. But we're better than them because we want to stop them from hurting other people. Kill all their sons, fathers, and grandfathers, whatever. Yeah. So Terry, Terry's focus on. She's like, you know what? We're gonna save more people. We're gonna come out. We're gonna. I'm gonna tell Rick where they are. Yeah. So then we go. Uh, we go to uh, Rosita taking off just afterwards, and she goes to the hilltop, and she sees Sasha attending to that's what Abe's, I thought, Abe's grave. That's what I thought. Tara was talking to Rick about was Rosita leaving at first. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think talk but, to us. But hopefully, it's Oceanside. Mm-hmm. And then we see Rosita show up to the hilltop, and Sasha's visiting Abraham's grave, and she's like, oh. "Hey," and she's like, "I need your help." She's like, and she already knew. So on one condition, I get to take the shot. Yeah. So I'm, th- I'm, I'm also thinking that the reason that Rosie didn't, didn't leave right then, because she came with a, with a sniper rifle. So I think that sniper rifle came from the booty that Rick brought back. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah well, so, the answer is that for me. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, she starts into his grave. And so this is, they basically they say, we, we know what this means, right? We're not coming back. And so mm-hmm. literally, they can't get caught. If they get caught, it's going to bring more pain on everybody else, because they won't kill them, obviously. That's how it works. And so they make this pack to kill him, which scares me a little bit because Sasha's already on a new TV show next season, which might make this believe that this can be Sasha's exit out, which we said. I love her character. And a quick fact that might have happened, I think that's the first uh, gun that they found at the carnival, that sniper rifle, unless Michonne already had one. Because Michonne had one with a scope and shot down one of the, the three belt cans that were sitting in the carnival game. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, exactly. She, boom, shot that. She had a sniper rifle there. looks a lot like the one that was handed over, so she either stole Michonne's weapon or stole one of the first grabs in the carnival. Anyway. So then we get back, though. So Rick, Rick and them get, like, 60 guns. Like, you know, we're taking this. 63 we're take, guns on the counter. We're taking yeah, we're taking this right to, um, right to, right to our, the Irish Bell kids. They take it right, right to Jadis, and they say, hey, we got your guns right here. And what does she say? She says, not enough. We're going to need... Twice as much. Yeah. You know, to fight your fight, this is enough. But to fight our fight, we're going to need twice, if yeah. not more. Right. And so he said, this is a lot of guns. This is what you asked for. And Rosita's like, let's just take our guns back. Screw this. Yeah. And uh, she's like, these are our guns, and the deal's still on. And then Rick says, well, okay, we're taking ten. And she goes, five, and the cat back. <laughs> yeah, she the little cat he took from a show. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. garbage. Yeah, they're cat. always watching. They're very vigilant people. Like these, yeah. they, they look like they're, they're nothing to them, but they're very vigilant. They're mili- they're very militant, and uh, like I said, they have no no love for human life or their own life. It seems like they just don't care about anything. The girl with the knife turned in. Go ahead. Yeah, right there, Make my life dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so a lot of things coming up. It's a very good build up episode. Good wins. Seeing Rick being happy again when Rick's happy. The show is just a better show. Oh, yeah, it's all good. All right, here with you, buddy. Let's get to it. Here's today's whiskey fact on how it's good for you. Whiskey fact number 34. Whiskey slow down the onset of dementia. Huh? Oh, wait a minute. I thought it was fucking great. <laughs> All right, now it's time of the episode where we break down the whiskey we've been drinking all episode. We're drinking 10 cup American whiskey tonight, bottled in Denver, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be, as Trav explained earlier when we first tried it before the show, it seems to be a very young whiskey. Mm-hmm. What it means by that, in my mind, is it tastes like gasoline. A little bit. <laughs> you know, it has that sharp, fumigated taste in yeah. it that nobody's really looking for. We're looking for that smooth barrel taste kind of thing. You're seeing these days that, like, uh, obviously I'm not talking older and I notice <clears> more, <throat> kind of when your friend gets a new car, you notice that car all the time. But I notice people with whiskeys are coming out, like, like every day there's more and more whiskeys coming out. 
And which is which is fine and great. The biggest thing I have a problem with that is whiskeys are coming out and they're they're young. They're not aging barrels. How old is this? A day out of my garage, fool. Yeah, yeah like literally, like, 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 almost <laughs> done. Ring my sock. Yeah, hold on, man. So yeah. they let the, it takes four years to, to make a whiskey or a bourbon, even even to be any kind of subpar. Even standard. black velvet is aged. Four years. Four days. That ought to tell you something. And, and, and so, <laughs> like, four in it, all right? So you get these new young whiskeys, they want to pump them out as fast as they can to ride this train while they can, but they're putting out inferior products, which is not not good to, for me and Trevor, it doesn't do us any justice. Yeah. So Trevor, who would, who would in, the, in The Walking Dead, would drink a whiskey like this? I think uh, somebody would forget to bring this whiskey with them, and the little junkyard kids would be waiting in the bushes and snatch it to uh, have this whiskey. But I, I do kind of, I still do kind of enjoy it, so I think that... Uh, even Abraham or Daryl might do this. Rick and Michonne after they after a good fucking or before a good fucking would drink this, <laughs> and uh, you know get that mood uh, saucy up. So pretty much everyone on the show would drink this. Which is right. <laughs> like four people. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like this whiskey, but you know. interview baby. 